<laughs> Hello, Earthroots friends and family, homeschool students, Forest Kindergarten. My name is Lila. Um, I'm a um, villain Earthroots instructor, and I've been connected to Earthroots for a really long time. So I just wanted to share with you today um, a couple things. One is a story that I want to share with you um, that has to do with the night sky and stars. Um, and the other is a uh, fire by friction. So I hope you enjoy and um, I hope you guys are all having good adventures at home and in connection with nature. Um, yeah. So I want to share with you this story um, that I have and it's actually a children's book called Coyote and the Sky, How the Sun, Moon, and Stars Began. And it's actually from a native Pueblo tribe and it's just kind of like a folk story um, but it has to do with the stars and also with making fire so I thought it would be really fun to connect to the lesson that you guys are learning now so have fun okay here's the picture a little bit hard to see with the reflection. Sorry about that. A long time ago, the animal people decided to make a journey up into our world, the fourth world. Back then, where we lived in the underworld was called Shapap, or the third world. Where's the next one? The animal people went to the leader of the third world and asked him for advice. What should we do when we go to the fourth world? And he gave them great advice about how they should all stay together and watch out for one another. Next page. But there was one animal that leader didn't allow to join the other animals on their journey. Coyote. This, would be, this was because he was always making mischief or trying to trick someone out of food. The next page. When everyone was ready, they started to make their long journey. The animal people began to climb and climb and climb up into the fourth world. When they arrived, it was very dark. They could not see anything and kept bumping into one another. They were scared. Next page. What should we do, they asked each other. The animal people huddled into a close circle. They decided to send Squirrel and Rabbit back down into the third world to ask Leader for more advice. There is no light in the fourth world. What should we do, cried Rabbit. Leader took some time to think about their problem. Then he began to build a big fire. And while it was burning, he began to make a yucca mat. When he was done, the coals from the fire were nice and hot and glowing. Leader used a stick to put all the coals onto the yucca mat and tied it into a bundle. He told Squirrel and Rabbit to run quickly with the bundle up into the fourth world. <laughs> when they reached the other animal people, they opened the yucca mat. The animal people grabbed each corner of the mat and flung it into the heavens. The glowing coals came together into a big circle in the eastern sky and became our sun. At last there was light. How beautiful it was. But then the sun began to move across the sky to the west and soon disappeared, and it was dark again. Now what should we do? The animal people once again huddled into a small circle. Again they decided to send Squirrel and Rabbit, Rabbit, because they were the fastest, down to the third world to ask the leader what to do. This time he made an even bigger fire with bigger coals. While it was burning, he made another yucca mat. When the mat was done and the coals come f came from the fire were red and hot, leader took the coals and put them onto the mat. Leader tied the mat into an even larger bundle. It was very heavy, and Rabbit lifted the bundle with all her might and ran up to the fourth world, with Squirrel leading the way. 
When they reached the animal people, they untied the bundle. They took each corner of the mat and with a great effort flung it into the heavens. And this became our moon. But still, it wasn't bright enough and something was missing. So Squirrel and Rabbit were sent down again to the third world to ask Leader what to do next. This time he made an even bigger fire and an even bigger mat. All this time, little did they know, Coyote was hiding, watching, and listening. When all was ready, Lita wrapped the red-hot coals in the mat and told Rabbit to run as quickly as she could, back up into the fourth world with Squirrel leading the way. Rabbit could feel the heat from the coals, and even to this day you can see that Rabbit's eyes are pink from the heat. But Rabbit was very brave. She held the yucca mat out in front of her and all she could see was Squirrel's tail leading the way. They did not know Coyote had come out of hiding and was following them up into the fourth world. When they reached the other animal people, Coyote was very angry that he had not been invited to come to the fourth world. Coyote sulked behind a big rock so that no one could see him. When the animal people opened the bund big bundle, they asked Badger to draw pictures of each animal on the yucca mat with the red hot coals. Badger began to do so with a stick. All this time, Coyote was getting angrier and angrier. Suddenly he jumped out from his hiding place and grabbed one corner of the mat and flung it into the heavens. These coals became our stars, and if you look closely at the stars today, you can still see the outlines of the animal people that Badger drew on the yucca mat. These are our constellations. In some places, the stars are like clusters, like in the Milky Way. This is where Coyote messed up Badger's drawings. Finally, Squirrel ran back to the third world to tell the leader what Coyote had done. Leader decided to go up to the fourth world. Mm -hmm. When he got to the animal people, he told Coyote that he had been bad and must leave the fourth world. Leader put Coyote in a yucca mat and threw him among the stars in the southeast corner of the sky. He sent Squirrel into the northwest corner of the sky to watch out for the future of the animal people. Today, this constellation is known as the Big Dipper. This is how the sun, moon, and stars came to be. Thank you. <laughs> So now let's see if we can start a fire. And this morning I woke up to snow, so it's pretty exciting. So it's a little bit wet here. Um, it's springtime and there's a creek behind me that's flowing. And this is some of the trees and um, plant life that you can see in the background. So it's really gorgeous here. Um, and I live in the mountains, so it's really beautiful. But it is kind of wet, so we're gonna try to start a fire and there's a little bit of moisture in the air, so we're going to see if its fire goes. And I just want to show you a few of the tools. So here are a few of the tools that I have with me today. I'm going to use a bow drill. Um, and I'm going to start in this little stove, which is actually a camping stove that burns wood instead of fuel. And here are some of the small tinder or scrap pieces of wood that I've um, cut up as kindling. Um, this is my knife. Um, this is the this is the actual bow. So here's my bow. This is the spindle. And this I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> but this is what I'm actually gonna burn the hole into to collect ash so that we can get a coal to start the fire. And what I'm gonna start the fire on is or used to get the fire going right at the beginning is this crushed up and dried mugwort that a friend of mine in California actually gave me. So I carry it around with me whenever I go camping. If I ever want to start a fire, I have some dry tinder. So I'm going to see if we can get a coal going here. Um, I'm going to show you where my setup is. And I have my fire board on top of this piece of bark so that when I use my bow drill, it collects ash on the piece of bark. And once I see that ash starting to glow, I know that I have a coal. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ash or that coal and I'm going to drop it into this bundle of tinder, which is mugwort and it looks like a little bit of bark. And I'm going to try to blow it into fire. So that's going to be the process and it might take me a little while to get an actual coal, but I'm going to show you what um, it looks like to work the bow drill and then um, we'll hopefully get a coal. So I like to put, um, when I'm actually using the bow drill, I put one foot on my fireboard just to hold it in place. And I'm going to take my bow and spindle and I'm going to twist it into the bow. And the pointy top, the pointy end goes up and the smooth end goes down. This is the part that's actually going to go into the fireboard. And I'm going to hold it with this piece of wood. And the piece of wood has a divot in it. And the divot is what holds the spindle in place. So we're going to work this coal here for a little bit and see what we come up with. Almost. Hi everybody, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning into this class. Um, I actually didn't get a coal today and sometimes it works out like that. Um, I did spend a very long time trying though. Um, so yeah, I just want to encourage you all to um, keep trying if you're learning how to do fire by friction and also really pay attention to your environment. I had a feeling that it was going to be really wet and um, I think that has something to do with it. It's definitely easier to um, to do fire by friction when it's dry outside. Um, environment has a lot to do with it. And um, if you have people also that can take turns with you, that's really um, good and helpful. And it just takes a lot of practice and a lot of time learning. So um, there's a lot of little details um, that are good to hone in and so that takes time but thank you so much and i look forward to seeing you all again <laughs> <laughs>